breaks, which you got to do that. LaFonso Ellis, ESPN College, game day with us. Man, we appreciate you joining us so much, <laughs> man. So we really do. So, My pleasure, in, in your opinion, <laughs> in your yeah. opinion, is this as deep yeah. as the conference has been as far as bang for your buck with the Big 12 this year with possibly eight teams getting in the tournament? There's no question about it. I mean, let, let, let's take a look at the floor. Let's take a look at the floor of the Big 12 right now. You're talking about an Oklahoma team who beat Alabama, who in my mind is one of the top four teams in the country and one of the top four teams that I think can win the national title, beat them by 25. <laughs> and so it's been incredible uh, how competitive uh, the Big 12 has been, and and as I was looking the other day, I think five of the ten teams are in the top 20 uh, defensive efficiency in the country, and so there's no break. No matter who you're playing against, there's no break, and any team can beat any other team at any given time, particularly uh, when those teams are playing at home. Then, LaFonso, how did Kansas win this thing before the last day of the season? <laughs> with the the nothing really from their bench offensively all year, not even really m minutes from their bench. I mean, it's been their starting five or nothing, and they won it before the end of the season. So how did that happen in the deepest league in the country? Yeah, well, you look at – you know what you're going to get back in that out with Jana Wilson, right? And uh, Grady Dick, those, those two guys, along with Kevin McCullough, they form, I think, the best wing trio uh, in the country. And the key – has been the, the play of Dewan Harris. And the five losses that they have, I think Dewan Harris is averaging about two points a game. In their last five wins, he's averaging 13, 14 points a game. So the issue coming into the season were, were twofold. One, uh, would they be able to get any production from the five spot? K.J. Adams has been absolutely terrific as an undersized five, and that has a lot to do with Bill Self's genius in that, think about it, 10 years ago, when I first, 14 years ago when I started working for ESPN, uh, Bill Self played two bigs, right, two, two posts. And then uh, many years after that, then all of a sudden he went four out, one in. And here he goes being an innovator yet again. He looks down his roster and says, oh, man, I don't have a five guy. So now I'm going to play a more five out with an undersized five with uh, K.J. Adams and KJ, uh, I think the first seven, eight games, he was in single digits. But since then, he ran off about 10, 11, 12 games in a row where he had scored in uh, double digits. And uh, But the key has been uh, Dewan Harris. So my coming into the season, I was concerned about two things. One, uh, would they be able to get scoring production from the five spot? And then secondly, would they have any bench depth? And it's been miraculous what they've been able to accomplish without the bench depth because, of course, K.J. Adams has been really good as an undersized five. But he's been able to find ways, uh, Bill Self, to spell uh, his main guys for two minutes, three minutes here. And as a former player, that's all you need is a little little spell here where you're not playing 39, 40 minutes a night, but you're playing more 35, 36. And he's been able to steal some minutes for his key guys, and that's why you see them on the – verge of winning yet another regular season Big 12 title. Yeah, LaFonso, I guess the, the only downside of that is just to take some of that sizzle out of what should still be an incredible game coming up uh, with Kansas and Texas tomorrow. Uh, but Rodney Terry, I mean, he's done a fantastic job, got him all the way to the yes, end, and, uh, not yes. able to to get past Kansas as far as that regular season part of this goes, but still a lot of opportunities out there for them. I know that has to be, you know, just somewhat disappointing given they've hovered towards the top of the standings this entire time, mm -hmm. but still, despite that, uh, just your thoughts on what you've seen as far as this journey the Longhorns have been on uh, that was quite rocky back in December. Yeah, you, you, there would have been good reason for those guys to throw in the towel. But Seth and I, on our show, Seth Greenberg, that is, as we've been on several studio, uh, working in studio together so often, we didn't think that they would because of the veteran leadership that they have and guys like a Marcus Carr, uh, Tim, Timmy Allen. Uh, those guys have been brought up in the culture, uh, and those guys would continue to carry on the culture. It's not like Rodney Terry was an outsider coming in. He was actually he had been on that bench, and so what he basically did is picked up the baton and 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 allowed those guys the freedom to continue to run. You know, Marcus Carr has been really good this year. We know how good Timmy Allen is, uh, 15 feet in the end. Serge Ibari Rice coming from New Mexico State, has been such a blessing to that program. Uh, Dude's coming off, scoring uh, double digits off the bench. He saved them a number of times. Uh, and then 
you know, the key for me coming into the season is the same way with Kansas, is would they be able to get any production from their five spot? And Dylan DeSue has been playing really well as of late. So I know they fell short of their goal of winning a regular uh, regular season Big 12 title, but they have nothing to be ashamed of. And this is going to be a great game tomorrow. You saw Baylor and who they were that first half in Lawrence, and you've seen them before. And then, of course, they got smoked in the second half. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and I mean, had their doors blown off. But what yes. you've seen of them, they have at times been not very good on transition. Defense, they have at times yes. struggled inside with an offensive yes. presence. But who are they still, in your opinion, who you saw enough of to be a Final Four type team or at least a second weekend team? I think second weekend team. I think Final Four is a little much to ask because I know that everyone compare and and mind you, you smoke. You hear me say it all the time. You've heard me say it a million times. This is the best offensive backcourt in the nation, and it's not even close. And 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 because of that, that trio is compared to the trio who won the national title. Mm -hmm. The issue with the compare, you can compare them offensively, but defensively, they're two different two different classes. This this group this year with L.J. Cryer with Flagler, those guys aren't as good one-on-one -on -one defensive players as Butler and, and Mitchell uh, were. And so that's that's what you're seeing. And so the inconsistencies, even in a game like Kansas, where you see it from half to half, is because they can't guard it the way that that group and Macy O.T. did. But they're still good enough uh, offensively. JTT is back now. Uh, he, he'll be able to give them at least some stability at the five spot. And what I mean by that is I, I love Flo Thamba. That kid plays hard. Uh, it's just that uh, JTT brings an energy. Mm -hmm. He brings a voice. He brings a an ability to knock down an open three-point shot. He gets just a little bit more offensive versatility or offensive firepower than does Flo Thamba. So, I, if they're beaten in the first weekend, I would be absolutely shocked because I, I will pin them as a Sweet 16 team because they have the offensive firepower in the backcourt to be able to carry them. What team that you think will be a one seed would you be stressed out the most to be in, in their region? Probably Alabama. And, and the reason I say Alabama is because uh, I know they're young, and that's, that's one concern because they've never been in the spotlight of an NCAA tournament before. But they're the deepest, most talented team uh, in all of college basketball. Brandon Miller, 6'8", uh, 6'9", six, six, uh, excellent three-point shooter, shoots over 44, shoots over 40 percent from the three-point line, really good in ball screen situations and because there's a smaller guy guarding him. He can either pull up like a Kevin Durant does if they're short of it, or he turns the corner, can get to the rim. He draws two. He's a willing passer. Noah Clowney, 6'10", uh, plays the power forward spot for them. Long, lanky, can make an open three. Excellent rebounder, will block some shots runs the floor, Charles Bidiaco, a seven-footer inside, shot blocker, rebounder. This is a group that can play in transition. This is a group that can play in half court. This is a group that can play really big, which is the way they start with, with Miller and Bidiaco and Clowney at 6'8", 6'10", 7-foot, uh, respectively. Or they can downshift and put Clowney at like a 5 and uh, put Brandon Miller at a 4, and you still have a mismatch out there. And Mark Sears... Uh, the transfer from Ohio can really knock down shots, and so this, this, it's a very, it's a really, really intriguing team. Uh, I wish their defensive numbers were a little bit better. If their defensive numbers were a little bit better, I would be as confident with them winning the national championship as I was with Baylor two years ago. Uh, but they, they're they're solid defensively, but they're not great defensively. But they're explosive offensively. Lafonso, last question. Game day tomorrow in Chapel Hill. You've been to a bunch of them, and you've been on it for now a while. Is it even mm -hmm. bigger than you ever thought it would be as someone who's now a part of the actual production? It, it, it is. And Smoke, I said this a while ago. I said this to my wife, actually, and she sent me a really sweet text uh, in the first meeting this year. I'd always wanted to have the opportunity to call a, a Duke, North Carolina game. And look at what the Lord's done. Here I am with mm -hmm. college game day, and I get a chance to have a front seat <laughs> uh, there and doing the halftime shows and the under four pops and et cetera. 
And even without uh, Coach Krzyzewski, uh, it's still Duke, North Carolina, the two biggest brands in all of college basketball going at it tomorrow. I think the atmosphere is going to be incredible. And North Carolina's got a lot to play for. Got preseason. Got, they, they were up 15 in the national championship game last year. Ran out of gas toward the end. Came into this season, preseason number one. And now they're fighting for their lives to just make it into the NCAA tournament. And it's Duke. Yeah. <laughs> a team that's really healthy now and has found its way. And they're going to go at it tomorrow. I can't wait to see it. LaFonso, thank you so much for your time. I know you have a bunch on your plate. We appreciate you so much. I appreciate you guys. You Thanks too. for having me on. LaFonso Ellis, day. ESPN College Game Day. Steve Ohai Flaw.